This is now our third video looking at using integration to find the area trapped between a curve and the x-axis. In the first question, we're told the curve C has equation y is equal to x squared minus 5x plus 4. It cuts the x-axis at the points L and M as shown in the diagram above. In part A, we need to find the coordinates of the point L and the point M. So let's just consider now, at this point, y will be equal to 0. So if we now write y is equal to 0, we can say 0 will be equal to x squared minus 5x plus 4. That will factor, so we'll have x minus 1, and then we'll have x minus 4. So x is equal to 1, or x is equal to 4. That's where now the curve is crossing the x-axis. Simply by looking at the graph, we can see now when x is equal to 1, that's going to give us L. So the coordinates of L are 1, 0, and we need to put 1, 0. Simply putting x is equal to 1 is not what they're asking for. They're asking for the coordinates. We've got now M, and we can say that that's 4, 0. OK, so that part's done. In part B, we need to show that the point N, 5, 4, lies on C. So what we could do is say let Y, so let Y be equal to the F of X. So what I'm going to do here is the F of 5. So simply subbing in, we're going to have now 5 squared minus 5 lots of 5 plus 4. So we've got 25 minus 25 plus 4, which gives us now the y corner of 4 as required. In part C, we're asked to find the indefinite integral of x squared minus 5x plus 4 with respect to x. So let's go ahead and do that. So x squared minus 5x plus 4, and we're integrating now with respect to x. We've not got limits on this, so we're simply going to add a constant of integration at the end. So raised by a power, divide by the new power, 1 third x cubed. Raised by a power, divide by the new power, minus 5 over 2 x squared, plus the 4 x, plus a constant of integration. So do remember your constant of integration. We're now told the finite region R is bounded by ln, lm and the curve C as shown in figure 2. In part D it says use your answer to part C to find the exact value of the area of R. So this is R right here. What I'm going to do is consider this to be the area trapped under the curve and also a right angle triangle. So I'm going to find the area of a right angle triangle. I'm then going to subtract away the area trapped under the curve between M and N. So what I've got now is this triangle. Labeling up the x-axis, we know the point L is going to be 1, 0. We've got M, which is 4, 0. And we've got this point just here, which is going to be 5, 0. So what I'm going to say then is R will be equal now to the area of the triangle. So we can say now area of triangle, so area of triangle, minus now the integral from this point right here. So I'm going to find the area trapped under the curve here, and I'm just going to call this S. So minus this, and this is going to be 4 to 5 of our function, which is x squared minus 5x plus 4. So that's what we're going to do, OK? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, if I look at this triangle, we've got the dimensions that we need on it. So just drawing it up just here, we're going to have a simple right-angle triangle. The base of the triangle is going to be 4. That's the difference in the x-coordinates. So now I'm going to have this as 4. Right-angle triangle, I've got now the height. The height is simply the y-coordinate, which is going to be 4. So we can say the area of the triangle is going to be 1 half times by 4 times by 4, and that's going to give me 8. So this right here is 8. So r is going to be 8 minus now the area that I can find just here. And that is the area trapped under the curve. OK, let's go ahead and find the area trapped under the curve. And we can do that using this part right here. And that's what it's telling me to do. So what I can say then is S will be equal to the integral now from 4 to 5 of now the x squared minus 5x plus 4. And remember, we're integrating now with respect to x. So we can say now that S will be equal to, and we've got this just here, and we're going to evaluate. We're going to take this now from 4 to 5. We're going to have 1 third x cubed minus 5 over 2 x squared plus 4x. 
and we're taking this now from 4 to 5. So let's just put those on that end. Better notation. Let's go ahead and do that. And that's what we'll have. So let's do that. Now I'm going to sub these in. And in the exam, I suggest that you show that it's 1 third of 5 cubed minus 5 over 2 of uh, 5 squared and so on and so forth. I'm just going to write it out. So we're going to have S. We're going to have now uh, 1, 2, 5. 5 cubed is 1, 2, 5 over 3. Minus 5 squared, 25. 5 times 25 is 1, 2, 5. Minus 1, 2, 5 over 2. Plus now 4 lots of 5, which is 20. I'm now going to subtract away, subbing in 4. 4 cubed is 64. So uh, 64 over 3. Minus 4 squared, 16 over 2 is 8. Minus 40. And then plus 16. So let's get a calculator and find the value now of s. Right, let's grab that up. So what we're going to have then is the following. We're going to have 1, 2, 5, and then that's divided by 3. Minus now the 1, 2, 5. And do check the exam uh, mark schemes to see just how much they want. Sometimes they like to see 5 being subbed in. Sometimes you'll get away with writing that. But please do check either with the exam board or mark scheme or your teacher. So what we've got then is 64 over 3, and then we've got minus 40 minus, uh, plus 16, which is minus 24. Okay, what's that going to give me? That's going to give me 11 over 6. So we can say then that S will be equal to 11 over 6 units. So all I'm going to do is take 11 over 6. So we can say that R will be equal to 8 minus 11 over 6. So the air of a triangle is all of this right here. I found and I'm going to subtract that away. So R, let's just switch this up, that's going to be 48 over 6 minus 11 over 6. So we can say now that the area of R is going to be 37. So 37 over 6 and that will be units squared. And that is the exact value. Exact means that we leave it as a fraction. We don't go ahead and write it as a decimal answer, it's just now a fraction. So all I've done is considered some basic um, areas of triangles and then subtracted away the integral in this given uh, interval between 4 and 5. Okay, let's look at another one. We're told the diagram above shows a sketch of part of the curve with equation y is equal to 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed. The curve has a maximum turning point A. So that's the maximum turning point. It says in part A using calculus show that the x coordinate of A is 2. So in this particular question, now we're going back to differentiation. Many of these questions will be expecting you to use a range of skills. So it won't just be a question that's purely now integration. So what we can say then for now turning point for TP, dy by dx, the gradient function will be equal to zero. Just consider that if we've got now a maximum, if I drew now a tangent at this point, what we've got then is a gradient of zero. We've got a flat line. So we can say dy by dx is equal now to 0. And we need to go ahead and find that. So we've got to y now. So let's write this here. y is going to be equal to, what have we got? 10 plus now 8x plus x squared. And then we've got minus x cubed. So if we take the derivative dy by dx, differentiating a constant will give me 0. Differentiating 8x will give me 8 plus the derivative of x squared, which is 2x, and now the derivative of x cubed, which is going to be now 3x squared. So we can set this to 0, so we've got 8 plus 2x minus 3x squared. At this stage, you can sub in at 2 and show that's equal to 0. Alternatively, we could factor this. 3x squared minus 2x minus 8 is equal to zero, especially if we were asked to find another possible turning point. Um, so let's try and factor that. What are we going to have? 3x plus 4 and then the x minus 2. So if I know that x uh, just here, a is 2, that will give me one of the factors. So I can just go ahead and factor that. So we can say x is equal to 2 or x is equal to minus 4 thirds. And just looking just here, it suggests that there's going to be a minimum point around here and that would correspond to this one right here. So what we can say then, this is going to give us A. And that's one way of doing it. Um, so that part's done. We're now told the region R, shown shaded in the diagram, is bounded by the curve, the y-axis, and the line from O to A, where O is the origin. In part B, it says, using calculus, find the exact area of R. Right, let's now just drop a perpendicular down here. 
So what we're going to have then is another perpendicular. And yet again, I'm going to do this with now a triangle. So what we've got then is this scenario. Now we're told that the x coordinate, and we've shown the x coordinate here of a is 2. So what I'm going to do is find the area of this triangle and subtract it away from the area trapped under the curve from 0 to 2. Now what I want is the y coordinate of a. If I get the y coordinate of a, that will give me the height of my little triangle here. So what I'm going to do is simply sub that in. So what I'm going to press is 2. Then I'm going to have 10 plus now 8 answer, plus now my answer squared, then minus my answer cubed. And this will give me now the y coordinate just here. So all I've done is subbed in 2. I've put this into a calculator. And that gives me now 22. So what we've got then, we've got this point here. And this is going to be the point, And this is going to be 2, 22. So if I look at this now, I've got this little right angle triangle, and it doesn't look accurate, and it doesn't matter that it doesn't look accurate. What we've got is the fine. We've got a base now of 2, and despite it not looking like it, we've got a perpendicular height now of 22. So 1 half times by 2 times by 22 means that the area is going to be 22 units squared, and that now is the area of the triangle. What I'm going to do is take the integral, and I'm going to say now that this whole area is going to be s. The whole area is going to be s. So s is going to be equal to the integral. Now, we're taking this from 0 to now the point of 2. So we've got now the integral of 10 plus 8x plus x squared minus x cubed. So we're integrating that with respect to x between those limits. So we can say now that s will be equal to, we're going to have 10x. Now I'm going to just do this uh, rather than writing it out in long form. Do show me exam, you're raising by a power, dividing by the new power. So if I raise by a power and divide by the new power, I'm going to get plus 4x squared. And then I'm going to have plus 1 third x cubed. And then on the next one, minus 1 over 4 x to the power of 4. And I'm interested in this now between 0 and 2. So S is my total area. So that's the area trapped under now the curve right here, okay, between these two points. So let's go ahead and just put this through a calculator. Again, in the exam, show what you're doing. In fact, I'll do this. Let's just say now that S. Let's go for that. So if we put 20, then we're going to have now 16 plus 16. Then we're going to have plus 8 over 3. And then we're going to have minus 4. And we'll subtract away from that 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. And do show that you're evaluating 0 through here. Don't leave it out. OK, what's that give me? That gives me 32 plus 8 thirds. So 32 plus 8 over 3. So what's that? That's going to be 104 over 3. So that's 104 over 3. If I just add these, that's 96 plus 8, which is 104 over 3. Now, that is the total area. That is everything. So if I want R, what I need to do at this stage, and I'll just uh, get rid of this. What I want, I've found the total area. So now I'm going to subtract away. So my total area just found is all of this right here. It's all of the stuff trapped under the curve between those two. At this stage, I need to take away my triangle. And that will give me now R. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm taking away, uh, that's not going to work, is it? Uh, let's grab this. This is the area of my triangle that's going to be subtracted. So I'm going to do that, and let's go ahead and do that. So we can say now that R, and make sure your workings are neat, R will be equal to 1 over 4, uh, sorry, 104 over 3, minus now the 22. So 22 is going to be now 66 over 3. So again, for a calculator, if you want 104 over 3 minus 66 now over 3. So what's that going to give us? 66 over 3. That's going to leave us now 38 over 3. Yeah, that's pretty good. 38 over 3. So let's write that there. R is going to be equal to 38 over 3. And that's now the exact answer. Just checking back, that was 37 over 6. I thought they looked a little, a little familiar. I was going to say, if they were the same answer, quite clearly it wouldn't always be the same answer. It was just pure coincidence, but it's obviously not the same value. So all I've done is simply gone ahead and done that. And I've considered now the air of the triangle. And with this method, this method is my preferred choice to find the air of this triangle and subtract it away from the area trapped under the curve.
You can, of course, put that as a mixed number. So what did we have? 38 over 3. If you want to put it as 12 and 2 thirds, you're welcome to do so. But don't write it as a decimal answer. This is the exact area just here. We want the exact area, not a decimal answer. So that's another way now that we can find the area trapped under the curve and just by using integration.